For a long time, people have suspected that Australia's premier intelligence agency, ASIO, was penetrated by one or more Soviet moles during the last decade of the Cold War, although this has never been officially acknowledged. There are growing calls for the government to reveal what happened, and now an unexpected voice has weighed in. Former spy Molly Sasson worked on the Soviet espionage desk in the 1970s. She's now the first ASIO officer of that period to break her silence, and she says the Russians did infiltrate the heart of Australian espionage. Cameron Stewart from the Australian newspaper has this special guest report for 7.30. It was the height of the Cold War and the battle between communism and the West was spreading across the globe. Into this world in 1969, a new recruit arrived at the Canberra office of the National Spy Agency, ASIO. I was told to help solve the problem, who was who, in, Rus in the Russian embassy, because there were a lot of spies, a lot of people, a lot of Russian people in the embassy who were actually running agents in Canberra and we couldn't find them. Now, this former spy is breaking a 46-year silence to reveal what she says is the darkest secret of all, something which ASIO and successive governments have never admitted in public. I have no doubt at all that ASIO was penetrated because the Soviets always seem to be a step ahead of us. If we put on an operation, it failed. There must have been a tip-off. It can't, can't be otherwise. For her to come out now uh, and say, I think this needs to be on the record, I think is path-breaking. Uh, and I would like to think that this will set the ball rolling to the matter now being cleared up in the public domain. Molly Sasson has lived a life bigger than most of us could imagine. She began her career in British military intelligence in World War II, interviewing captured Germans at the front line. It was dangerous. We were bombed by the Germans and also by the Brits, because they could sometimes see the difference. After the war, Molly went undercover for MI5 to look after Britain's first major Soviet defector, the rocket scientist Grigory Tokayev and his family. That is the Cold War Medal, and that's given to people who have worked um, in the Cold War on dangerous operations. Molly Sasson was a woman working in a man's world. Never was this more true than in her next job as an intelligence officer for ASIO. The very first thing I was told in the first week I was there, um, oh, women don't belong in this organisation. And I looked at him and he said, women belong in the kitchen and in bed. And I was horrified. I walked out of the door and went to my office where I found documents six months old that had never been touched, straight from the intercept room, and I found a lot of papers unactioned, and I wondered what was going on. Today in Australia, Reds openly preach their gospel, flout our laws, and form a growing menace to the future of this country. Molly was given one of the most sensitive jobs in ASIO, to compile the daily intelligence report on Soviet diplomats who the agency suspected were operatives for the KGB, or GRU, Soviet Military Intelligence. I used to um, get all the reports from The Intercept. I used to have agents' reports. I saw the static site reports, and I had the surveillance team behind me. And from that, I could have a pretty good idea of what they were doing. You speak of another occasion where you were chasing a suspected Russian agent who worked for the GRU, the Soviet Military Intelligence. Yes. And that you believed he was going to have a rendezvous with an unknown Australian in yes. Canberra's Delopia Park. Yeah. We were waiting for this particular man and we were all in place and he, I was in the office waiting and all these people were there, but they never turned up. He never turned up. He took the evening flight to Moscow. He was tipped off by someone. As operation after operation failed, she confided her fears that ASIO had been penetrated to her immediate superior. He said to me, well, don't open this can of worms. 
So you firmly believe that there was a Soviet mole inside ASIO at the time that you were working with ASIO? Yes, I do. Is there any doubt in your mind? None. In 1974, Molly revealed her suspicions to Justice Hope during the Royal Commission into ASIO. Justice Hope was supposed to give you half an hour of his time, wasn't he? Yes. What happened? I had meeting? two hours. I gave six sheets of evidence to him. Those sheets contain the names of several ASIO colleagues whom she suspected of being too close to the Soviets. The Royal Commissioner reached no firm conclusion, finding only that ASIO may or may not have been penetrated by a hostile intelligence service. It's important to realise that we're a, a, a key part of an international security and intelligence network. Former Defence Intelligence Analyst Paul Monk says the KGB identified Australia as a crucial target in the 1970s and 80s. What the Soviets set out to do was to get access to US and British intelligence rather than simply ours via the back door. And it's been stated by a number of people that uh, they were so successful that they were getting access to pretty much everything via their assets in Canberra. Molly says the Americans knew that ASIO had been compromised. To this day, no one can say how much intelligence the CIA withheld from ASIO as a result. Molly recalls a dinner conversation in the mid-70s with the then CIA station chief in Canberra. I said to him, why don't you join us for some operations? And he looked at me and smiled and he said, we can't do that, you're penetrated. We know that. With the end of the Cold War, former KGB agents like Olye Kalugin provided evidence to back what Molly had long suspected that the Soviets did have a mole inside ASIO in the 1970s and 80s. Once we penetrate ASIO, we have actually some penetration and sometimes very deep penetration of the CIA, of the FBI and the British MI5 and MI6. That's precisely what happened. What was your reaction when you read those accounts? Well, I told you so. I've spoken with two former ASIO officers who worked with Molly Sasson. They declined to be on camera, but they share her view that ASIO was infiltrated by at least one Soviet mole during the 1970s and 80s. And they want the government to tell Australians exactly what happened. No government has ever admitted that ASIO was penetrated by the Soviets in the final decades of the Cold War. Do you think that it's important that history is set straight? Yes, I do. Very, very important for ASIO to be fully believed if they can confront their past. If that can happen uh, during the Cold War, uh, why would it not happen again? If we haven't got an adequate accounting for what went wrong before, what warrant do we have for believing now that the organisation set up to protect us and our security uh, and our place in international alliance uh, will function now and not be compromised? ASIO told 7.30 it doesn't speak about operational matters and wouldn't comment on whether it had been penetrated by the Soviets. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Now Molly has written the story of her amazing life. This had to be written, and it is history. I think honesty is very important, respect is very important, and duty is important. Looking back at 92, you've had a remarkable life. How do you feel? Happy that I could do it. I loved my work despite it all.